Hi, and welcome to this five minute physics video about renewable energy resources. Renewable energy resources are resources that are being replaced as they are used. That means they're never gonna run out. You don't need to know a great deal of specific detail about how each of these systems work, but it's helpful to have a bit of background knowledge and you will be expected to know pros and cons of each of them. So here we go. First, falling water hydroelectric and tidal lagoons. These work in a very similar way. Step one, build a dam across a river valley or a barrage in a tidal estuary. Both of these are basically just a big wall. Step two, in the wall are small tunnels that contain turbines. We call these tunnels penstocks and we let water pass through them. This water makes the turbines spin and the turbines drive a generator producing electricity. Step three is refilling the reservoir. In falling water hydroelectric, we rely on rain, which falls directly into the reservoir, or it falls upstream, flows down in rivers to refill the reservoir. For tidal turbines, then we just wait for the tide to come back in. The water passes through the penstocks, makes the turbine spin again, and refills the lagoon. The advantages of these two methods are that there are zero running costs. We don't need to pay for any fuel, and no greenhouse gases are produced, so they don't have any effect on climate change. They're also reliable, Provided we've got water in our reservoir, we can always generate electricity and tides can be predicted hundreds of years in advance. The downsides are very high building costs and the impact on the wildlife. In producing the reservoir or the lagoon, then areas which would have been dry land are taken away and the animals that would have fed there can no longer do so. Biofuels are used in much the same way as fossil fuels in a thermal power station. Check out our video on those if you're not sure about them. The only thing that's different really is the fuel we're using. So typical biofuels can be things like wood from trees, waste products from agricultural processes, for example, the cane left over after producing sugar from sugar cane, or we can take other waste such as animal dung, we can stick it in a biological digester and produce flammable gas. Now all these things, when we burn them, do produce carbon dioxide, but because they've only just grown, the trees have taken in carbon dioxide as they grow, then all we were doing is releasing back that CO2 into the atmosphere. Overall, no CO2 is added to the atmosphere in the process. So we call these carbon neutral. Because we're just using a thermal power station, these are very reliable sources of energy. As long as we've got fuel, we can generate electricity. The main downside to biofuels is that they can impact food prices. If it becomes more profitable for farmers to grow wood or to grow biofuels, then they may switch to doing so. And this can drive up the cost of food, particularly in poorer countries. Wind and wave technology both extract energy from the kinetic store of wind, either directly for wind turbines or indirectly, given that all waves more or less are produced by the wind. Neither of these methods have any running costs. So once they're produced, then they give you free electricity uh, and neither of them produce any greenhouse gases either. However, Building both of them can be fairly expensive, although the cost of wind turbines has reduced significantly in the last decade or so, as they've become more and more popular. Their big downside is that they are unreliable. Because they depend on the wind for their energy, then that can fluctuate. So on some days you'd have more, on others you'd have less, and you may be left with none at all. So we can't necessarily generate the electricity that we need when we need it. Solar panels use electronic components called photovoltaics to generate electricity directly from sunlight. Contrary to popular belief, they do actually work when it's cloudy as well, although they're not quite as powerful. They don't have any fuel costs, which obviously is a big advantage, and don't produce any greenhouse gases. However, while they will work when it's cloudy, they don't produce anywhere near as much power, and obviously at night time they're completely useless. Geothermal energy involves drilling holes down into the Earth's crust, in places where rocks are heated by magma beneath the surface. In theory, this is anywhere on Earth, but it's only really economically viable in places like Iceland, where there's a lot of volcanic activity. Otherwise, the holes you have to drill are just too deep. You pump water down, the water boils, and the resulting steam can drive the turbines in a thermal power station. Again, there are no fuel costs involved in doing this. The Earth is doing the heating of the water for you, and no greenhouse gases are produced. Unfortunately, it only works in certain locations, and once you've drilled your hole, the hotspot you're using can actually cool down over time and you can be left with a very expensive power station that's now built in the wrong place. Normally, at the end, I do a summary slide, but if I did it this time, I'd just be repeating everything I've just told you. So instead, I'm gonna give you a couple of exam tips on how to maximize your marks. 
People very often say things which are too vague, which aren't recognized by the mark scheme. So do describe things as renewable. Remember that means that they are being replaced at the same time as they're being used. So they're not gonna run out. It is definitely worth saying that things don't produce greenhouse gases, or you could be specific, so they don't produce carbon dioxide. However, don't say the following things. Don't describe stuff as green. Okay, the turtle on the left is green, the wind turbine on the right is white. Don't say things that are environmentally friendly or eco-friendly or anything else that sort of inspires an idea of a fluffy white rabbit or a killer whale or dolphins or anything else. If you're using the word friendly in an answer, stop. Do yourself a favor, cross it out and think again. Interestingly, the word sustainable often doesn't get you marks as well. It's fine in geography, but not in physics. So don't use that, use renewable instead. And finally, don't say that things are polluting or not polluting. Be specific. Are they releasing greenhouse gases? Are they not? Thanks for watching this five minute physics video. Please check out our other videos explaining GCSE physics in simple five minute lessons. Bye for now.